Welcome back. So, we got a brand new armor skill, something that's pretty rare for the archetype itself. Please laugh, I made it up on the spot. And for being serious for a second, this new armor skill, Armored Beacon, is honestly a really nice special to have, not only for armors that are already pretty good at tanking as is, but also ranged armors because now they have the ability to shrug off more effective damage such as Deadeye and Lethality and all that stuff, making them a bit more desirable now than they were, well, prior to this banner. And because of that, I did want to cover the special in as much detail as possible, recommend some builds for all sorts of armors, all sorts of archetypes, and all sorts of playstyles, and what I would generally recommend you giving it to over some others. So yeah, with that out of the way, we may as well go right into it. Armored Beacon is effectively a bonfire that trades 10% of the defense added to the special for ranged damage reduction that isn't pierceable. So unlike skills like Savvy Fighter, this cannot be pierced by stuff such as Dead Eye and Lethality or Special Spiral 4 or anything of the sort that grants an effect, making it so that even ranged armors are able to compete as far saves, which is really great because prior to this update, it was nearly impossible for most ranged armors to function as a far safe because they would just get shredded by pretty much everything. And now with Armored Beacon being in the game, also accessible by every single armor except for staves, it gives them a general fighting chance and I like that. It's really nice and I would argue this was a pretty decent update for a lot of armors. That being said, the special will lock you into a far save niche because you can only get the damage reduction if the foe has two range. And by doing so, you may want to consider whether or not you want to run Armored Beacon over Hardy Fighter. For example, running Hardy Fighter means that you're more than likely there just to soak damage for all of your allies. So rather than dealing damage, which isn't really going to be that great by itself, since you're effectively giving up your special and your B slot for defensive properties, your damage output regardless isn't going to be that great anyway. But with something like Armored Beacon, you are able to deal more damage, which is pretty good. And depending on the unit you use it on, you may also have a free B slot to use pretty much any other fighter skill or a seal skill or whatever the case may be. But it is worth noting that in terms of tanking prowess, it's going to be significantly weaker than Hardy Fighter because you're losing it on a significant amount of damage reduction that you get from the skill. It's also worth noting that Armored Beacon's damage reduction will go off whether or not you have your own special ready or not. So if the foe has a Deadeye ready and you have Armored Beacon uncharged, you're still going to get the damage reduction from it. But if there are instances where you're going up against something like a Catria Ball with maybe a Valentine's Crom or a Legendary Veronica, then Armored Beacon is only going to provide the damage reduction once. So in those instances, Hardy Fighter is going to be a bit better. Still, whether or not you want to prioritize damage output or tanking, that's really what it's going to boil down to. And before we go over the builds, I do want to make mention of several units that would probably make really good use of the skill and mention that the list I'm about to show you isn't a tier list, but rather a list of units that I think would significantly improve with the special over other units that don't necessarily need it or could go either way. For example, you have all the bow armors in Good Candidate, while you have maybe something like Summer Edelgard in Hardier Beacon or a lot of other characters in Hardy Aegis. And that isn't to say they can't use it or can't use it effectively, but in my opinion, if you are going to give Armored Beacon to an armored unit, you want to give it to somebody that will significantly improve as a far save from it, rather than a unit that can already go into a Hardy Aegis niche where they're already going to be functioning really well as is. So whether or not Winter Ignatz is a better candidate than maybe somebody like Gilliam, that isn't necessarily the point, but rather Winter Ignatz as a far save becomes significantly more effective than Gilliam with far save and armored beacon, because now Ignatz has a tool that allows him to function as a far save, whereas Gilliam already had the ability to use something like Hardy Fighter. And that's really what the list boils down to. Not necessarily a list of units that are better than others when it comes to it, although there are some notable mentions I have in the good candidate tier, but rather whose performances are going to significantly improve with the skill. And the first three that come to mind are Formotus, Winter Marth, and Halloween Duma. Formotus is probably going to be one of the easier ones to throw on here, not only because he has damage reduction on his A slot, and if the foe can make a follow-up attack, he gets another 80% damage reduction, but because it also deals damage and it protects him from stuff like Deadeye and Lethality, he's always going to have damage reduction no matter what, making it so he can be way more threatening as a far save. And if he is able to survive more often, the Nightmare is going to be much more effective. And one additional note is that you don't have to run Hardy Fighter if you're using Armored Beacon, 
mainly because they don't synergize and they don't work together, but because of that you could keep his base kit and he'll always have every effect from his weapon since he'll always be transformed, which is really good. Meanwhile, with Winter Marth, he does have his innate fire emblem, which is still pretty good as is, but with Armored Beacon and his Vantage PRF, he's going to be shrugging off so much damage in general that it's going to be really, really hard to deal with him unless you're able to outspeed, which I don't think a lot of units are going to be able to do unless they have some sort of buff shenanigans going on. But with Armored Beacon Winter Marth, he can not only charge it from his PRF, PRF really really easily but then he becomes a lot more defensive because he's still protected from stuff like Deadeye or Lethality or anything of the sort where they would have otherwise been able to pierce through stuff like Savvy Fighter and in some scenarios maybe you're going up against a Brave Attacker you can have Savvy Fighter trigger on the first hit assuming that they do survive the far save you have Savvy Fighter on the first hit and then if they have a special, you have Armored Beacon on the second, meaning that their survivability significantly increases as a result. And lastly, you have Halloween Duma, who is already really tanky as is, not only because his C grants damage reduction, and Ghostly Lantern slows down a special's cooldown, which is really, really good. But with Dragon Maul in his B slot, Mirror Stance in his A slot, which you can freely do because he does get distant counter as a sacred seal and armored beacon he can not only provide a fair amount of damage output from his special but he can also take a lot more because he's getting damage reduction from his b c and special and in instances where there is dead eye or lethality he's going to be able to shrug it off much more easily although you could still run stuff like sacred cow instead i find that armored beacon is going to be a bit more effective because it is the 40 flat as opposed to sacred cow's 30 percent and the fact that you get damage output from the special too, making it really beneficial not only for tanking purposes, but for damage output. Other notable candidates I wanted to mention were Winter Black Knight, Kanagus, and Valentine's Takami. Winter Black Knight debuted as one of those weird instances where he couldn't really function as a far save, even though his entire kit was built around it, because his PRF required that you have a special that triggers on your own hit, which Hardy Fighter Aegis doesn't do, because it's based on the foe's hit. But now with Armored Beacon being a thing that he can trigger on his own, it means he could take full advantage of his PRF, which includes no follow-up, damage reduction, a lot of attack and speed debuffs, on top of just extra stats and slang. And Winter Block Knight is still one of our fastest units in the game. Obviously, we do have a lot of fast units. Most of them are still going to do a fair amount of damage to him, but with the amount of speed debuffs that he's inflicting from his weapon, it's going to be rare that he really struggles on doubling or just avoiding doubles in general, unless it's from a Catria Ball. Meanwhile, with Kanegus, it's going to be pretty much the same thing as for Meltis. You do have the B-slot, which can be used for Beast follow-up, even though he does get a guaranteed follow-up from his weapon. But with the transformation in mind, he does get extra stats from his weapon that he otherwise would have lost out on, or would have been really hard to work around if he were using Hardy Fighter. And while nowadays everybody has some sort of null follow-up effect, in the rare instance that somebody has an impact effect, the double guaranteed follow-up will cancel out the impact effect. Although chances are it's not going to be something that you're really going to run into as a much, but it's still worth highlighting nonetheless. And with Valentine's Takami, he was really built just to counter Valentine's Crumb because he does have the Duma Pulse effect, but it only works on red units. But now with Armored Beacon, he's going to be able to shrug off hits a lot easier. And his weapon also debuffs attack and speed like crazy, so chances are he's not going to be getting doubled all that often, if ever, at least from ranged threats. Beyond the units that do have PRFs, minus the one I have in the third image, I wanted to talk about the bow units because I pretty much put every single bow up here and that's mainly because of the arcane providing damage reduction. So with damage reduction that you get on the first hit from the arcane and then the armored beacon that you would get on the second hit, assuming it is a second hit special, you're going to be shrugging off so much damage in general that I honestly think that bow armors for far safe purposes actually function really well now, whether that's your fast ones or your slow ones. In my opinion, Winter Ignite is probably one of the biggest winners with this skill because he has a really good speed stat. So with the arcane and savvy fighter for first hit damage reduction and if needed the damage reduction on the second hit from armored beacon he's going to shrug off a lot of damage in general. And while you don't necessarily need Savalon shield it will help in instances where you have to go up against units that have armor effectiveness. But for units maybe such as Annette, it may not necessarily matter in some scenarios, although it is fairly debatable as to whether or not they're going to be able to tank stuff like Valentine's Crom on a consistent basis, because that always depends on team compositions and all that stuff, but they can still run the same thing 
just without Savvy Fighter, but instead they can run Special Fighter 4, so they can get healing from Armored Beacon and maintain a sensible amount of bulk. And for units such as Picnic Floor and Valentine's Robin, they also do the same thing. So you're basically going to be running a similar set because they also have first hit damage reduction. And that's really going to be it for the units that I would absolutely recommend this special on. Although there are plenty of units that you could still slap it on and you may find a fair amount of success from it. Whether that's your fast demote armors or your slow demote armors that don't necessarily have damage reduction weapons. So maybe somebody like Winter Bruno with Savvy Fighter and Distant Defense and Attack Speed Far Save, they should also be able to reduce a fair amount of damage, which is pretty good. Although their Chrom matchups are going to be really bad regardless because it's red versus green. Not to mention the red unit has a really high amount of attack. So at that point, it's not really worth going the Saval and Shield route unless you can find a way to make Make it work. At that point, I would just continually try to bolster up their ability to soak hits and reduce speed on the foe, or just try to outspeed the foes in general. But maybe for some of your slower units, maybe such as Halloween Ilyana, you can maybe run something like Magical Lantern, so that way they can also charge up Armored Beacon really easily, because Magical Lantern does grant visible breath. Although, you could always run support such as Thor, or Na or whatever the case may be, or whatever provides breath, and can instead run something like Spider Plush, because it also has guard and attack debuffs. Whether or not you will have to run Saval and Shield in most scenarios will ultimately depend on what you use them in, but for something where you're going up against more modern units, you may appreciate something like Saval and Shield, but again, that will ultimately depend on where you use them. Same with the Dagger Armors, who can run Courtly Mask, and this one has a bit more of a tight leash because the weapon functions only if you have 50% or more of your HP present, which isn't necessarily the worst condition, but in the instance where you do fall below it, you may want to run something like Vengeful Fighter 4 or Special Fighter 4, the former which does grant a guaranteed follow-up, and the latter which has guard and healing. So whether you have acceleration support from allies or you have healing from allies, there is going to be a bit of a trade-off, but I guarantee you could find some way to make it work. And otherwise you have the Arcanes, which is really just going to be the Red Tomes for now because we don't have a blue or green Tome Arcane at the moment. But it does have slang, stats, penalty neutralization to your attack set, and a guaranteed follow-up. So you could always run something like Special Fighter 4, and you could double consistently, assuming the foe doesn't have full no follow-up, and you could get two Armored Beacons out just for damage output. In terms of tanking, the damage reduction is only going to apply once, so this would mainly be for damage output. And other than that, there were two units I wanted to discuss with Armored Beacon. Brave Edelgard, who has second hit damage reduction, although that also applies to Halloween Myrrh, and Fallen Edelgard. The second hit damage reduction units could honestly benefit from it. In the instances that the foe has some sort of instant special, it means you could shrug off their initial damage and then get further damage reduction from their B slot or whatever they get it from, which I think can be beneficial in its own right, but it will really depend on the foe and that really applies to a lot of these. So it's not always going to be something that's incredibly consistent, but it's something that will always be appreciated because you get damage reduction no matter what. And for units like Brave Edelgard, chances are you're going to be preparing more instant specials than not because they have the guard effect, which means getting specials off her that aren't instant is going to be a bit harder in general. And with Fallen Edelgard, one of her better niches is going to be Triple Gale Force, although it has fallen down in recent times mainly because she can't reliably one-shot a lot of things these days. So rather than trying to take the approach of going full Gale Force, you could have her still be a player phase menace, but you could also have her as a check against units that pierce through her damage reduction, most of which are ranged, although you do have some scenarios where maybe somebody like Legendary Nana or Spring Carla can pierce through it at melee, you're more than likely going to be finding them at 2 range, which is why I don't think it's really going to be as bad of an idea to run it on someone like Fallen Edelgard, especially since you do get damage output from it, even if it's just 10% less. And lastly, I wanted to cover the units that can really go either way when it comes to Hardy or Beacon, because I do think there's a fair amount of stuff that you could still do with them, whether that's just your first hit damage reduction units, maybe from something like Hare's Lance or Stout Axe or 
even units that have PRFs like Loyalist Axe from Valentine's Gustav. You can still do quite a good amount of stuff with them, even without Hardy Fighter, especially if you didn't really want to run that on them. So maybe for your Lance Armors or your Axe Armors, you can run first hit damage reduction with Armored Beacon for the second hit. It's really just going to be the same application as you found in a lot of the other builds. But maybe for somebody who's a bit faster, such as Winter Robin, you can still run stuff like Savvy Fighter and all that stuff. Although, in my opinion, if you're really going to be running Armored Beacon, you may want to counterattack just for the damage output, but I don't think it's necessarily the worst just for tanking purposes, especially since someone like him can get a lot of first hit damage reduction and a lot of second hit damage reduction if it plays out in your favor. Although beyond units that have first hit damage reduction, you could also try it on units that have Dragon Wall or the Arcane, whether it's the Axe or the Lance. The Axe and Lance in particular do have the breath effect in them, which does make it really desirable desirable for just charging up Armored Beacon and getting damage out, which is why I do recommend them over the swords more so than anything else. But for the Dragon Wall users, it's still going to be really good for general tanking because Dragon Wall does provide damage reduction on every single hit if you meet the condition. So with something like Arcane Grima and Dragon Wall on maybe somebody like Idun, if you have some sort of breath effect going, whether that's from Na or Thor, you can get an instant armored beacon and output a really good amount of damage. And really when it boils down to it, I find that these are probably going to be some of your best applications when it comes to armored beacon. A lot of the other units that don't necessarily want armored beacon is either because they have a good PRF that, that functions better without it, or they don't really have the necessary tools to make the most use out of it. But if you are going to be pulling for armored beacon in the hope of using it, I do at least recommend looking over these builds. And that's really going to be about it when it comes to the armored beacon skill. If you do end up pulling for this special, let me know who you plan to give it to. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to like and subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you later.